So which is better, Saxenda Wagovi? This is a question I get all the time. What is the agent that I should go on to try and lose weight? Which one is going to give me the best results? Well, it just so happens that you are in luck in that they just published a trial in January of 2022 that has answered exactly this question. Welcome back to the program, you beautiful people. My name is Dr. Dan. I am a pharmacist turned obesity expert. And before we dive into things here, I of course want you to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss another episode. As well, you really need to check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan on the gram, the tweet, the talk, the tick, you name it, we are out there. As well, check out my website, healthcareevolve.ca, where you can get and book in with myself to see if you would be a good fit for our program. As well, we have a ton of additional resources for you and your weight management journey there. So thankfully, the researchers from the STEP trials or the trials that basically got Wagovi to the market, thankfully, they did a comparison between Saxenda and Wagovi so that I didn't have to try and redneck fix something together and make my own comparison and probably ultimately embarrass myself. This really just gives us a head-to-head -head trial that really tells us which one is better, which one truly is the better agent. And this is really a good thing for everybody because I'm happy to admit I definitely did not get the handyman skills in my family whatsoever. My little brother, he definitely got all of them. In fact, he could probably take apart your entire car, put it back together, and it likely would run better than it did before. Me, on the other hand, well, <laughs> we are looking at a potential explosion or it all just falling apart on you. And this is why I stick to telling bad jokes and making YouTube videos. Anywho, the Step 8 trial is hot off the press. As I said, this was published January of 2022, so it literally just came out and was a direct comparison of Wagovi at 2.4 milligrams once per week to Saxenda 3 milligrams once per day. These are the max doses that these drugs can be pushed up to for obesity management. Now, one thing that I'm particularly excited about with this trial is that it was a superiority trial where literally the trial was designed to see which drug was superior to the other one. And the reason why this is so exciting is that most trials that are done with two drugs head-to-head -head are usually done as a non-inferiority trial, where our goal is basically to say that one drug is not inferior, it isn't worse than the other drug, it's about the same in terms of overall effectiveness and usually safety what we're, is what we're looking at in this regard. And when it comes to a non-inferiority trial, really all that we can say from the results is that, yeah, one drug is either as good and it's certainly not worse than another drug. It becomes more challenging to say, yes, our drug is much superior or much better than the comparator drug, although many authors and, and scientific publications will make these claims, although they're not technically supposed to be made. Or I should say they shouldn't be extrapolated as much as many authors and such will do. Now, it makes sense why drug companies do non-inferiority trials a majority of the time, because if you were to do a superiority trial and your drug compared to your competitor's drug came out to be worse and the competitor's drug came out to be better, well, that's probably not going to bode well for future pharmaceutical sales. However, in this case, Nova Nordisk is the manufacturer of both Saxenda and Wagovi. And so if one drug looks bad in comparison to the other, well, that's okay because they're just going to sell more of the other drug that they're ultimately trying to promote. Further, Nova Nordisk knew going into this trial that Wagovi was more than likely going to show much better results than Saxenda, hence they did the trial. And this really also makes sense because, well, Saxenda will be coming off exclusivity or off patent pretty quick here, and Wagovi will be their kind of shining star in obesity and weight management on the market. You know, business, politics, capitalism, whatever you want to call it. They are a private enterprise, and their goal is to make as much money as possible and to satisfy their shareholders. So this is just the reality of where we're currently at. And it is really no wonder why Novo and other drug companies have not reached out to sponsor any of my YouTube videos yet. So the authors of this study, or Rubino and Friends, recruited 338 individuals that either had a BMI greater than 30 or a BMI greater than 27, but they had one weight-related comorbidity, such as hypertension or diabetes. 
They then took these individuals and split them into four groups. The first two groups was Wagovi that got titrated up to a dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week and a placebo match. So they basically got a placebo drug that they injected once a week as well in a similar titration schedule to be matched with the Wagovi group that was getting the 2.4 milligrams once per week. And in the other two groups, the same was done with Saxenda, titrated to a dose of three milligrams once per day and matched to a placebo that, again, people were injecting once daily to a maximum placebo dose of three milligrams per day. Now, we had to create separate placebos in this situation because obviously Wagovi is a once weekly injection, whereas Saxenda is a once daily injection. And so humans being the funny things that they are, will know that, A, we're doing Wagovi or Saxenda, and if I believe that Wagovi is more effective than, say, Saxenda, I'm probably going to try harder in terms of weight loss than if I just got this once daily one that isn't going to be as effective. Now, obviously, there is still a chance for some bias to be in there because they obviously knew they're either injecting daily or once weekly, but we added that placebo aspect of things in, and that ultimately helps to mitigate some of that human bias. And I mean, ultimately, this is why we have the scientific process. This is why we do placebos. This is why we do rigorous, rigorous trials such as this and try to blind everybody so nobody knows what's going on in order to try and remove as much human bias as possible because, well, humans are very, very imperfect. Now, all four groups were then titrated up to the appropriate dose depending on their group for a 68-week period. All the individuals were provided with counseling in order to, say, maintain a calorie deficit of 500 calories per day based on the various calculations for energy requirements and stuff. As well, they were encouraged or asked to basically try and achieve 150 minutes of physical activity every single week at a minimum. And over the 68-week period, we then monitored them to see what was happening in terms of weight loss. So now that the boring stuff is all out of the way, what did Rubino and their friends actually find? And I think I already let the cat out of the bag on this one a little bit, but obviously Wagovi was found to be more effective. And after 68 weeks, the individuals that were taking Wagovi 2.4 milligrams once per week were found to have lost 15.8% of their baseline body weight, whereas the individuals that were taking Saxenda lost 6.4% of their baseline body weight. And for some clarity, what is meant when an individual loses percent baseline body weight? Basically, if I were to look at an individual that has 100 kilograms on them before they started the trial, and then they then lost 15.8% from that baseline level, that means they lost 15.8 kilos in the Wagovi group. And with regards to Saxenda, if they were a 100 kilogram individual, they would have lost 6.4 kilos in that period of time. Obviously, in both situations, still a significant amount of weight was lost. So obviously, Wagovi is more effective. And furthermore, to kind of confirm things that they did the trial right and such like that, these results are very similar to what we have found in previous trials. So that is kind of a nice confirmation that the authors did a good job of this trial. And to give you a bit more perspective, here's the actual graph, and you can see the two lines. The lower one on the bottom there is obviously Wagovi. The top one is Saxenda Group, and you can see how over the 68-week period, they were losing X amount of weight and reached their various baseline points. Now, as for adverse events, because we definitely couldn't do a direct comparison without looking at this aspect of things, because these are obviously very important, but as expected, Wagovi was shown to cause more GI disorders. In fact, it was 84.1% versus 82.7% when it came to things like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And one thing that was very interesting is that more individuals actually discontinued Saxenda compared to Wagovi. In fact, it was about 6.3 versus 0.8% of individuals discontinued a drug, Saxenda, in the 6.3, Wagovi in the 0.8 group. Um, due to GI conditions. So it's it's kind of strange that more people were dropping out of the Saxgenda group compared to the Wagovi group, even though Wagovi is certainly more potent. And this makes me think that there might have been some potential bias or something else kind of going on here by the drug company. Essentially, they did oversee everything as it is. And so it kind of makes me think that maybe they were trying to make Wagovi look less or less causing of adverse effects, I guess you could say. But in reality and in real life clinical practice, that's not quite the way that things tease out. And upon a little bit of further digging, because I don't like a mystery that goes unsolved, 
when I went and looked at the supplementary material, so it's not actually part of the original trial paper itself that gets published, it's kind of a, a supplement that some people may or may not click on. What I ultimately found is that there was a greater number of people in the Wagovi group, 14%, that didn't reach the target dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week, whereas in the Saxenda group, there was only 3% of people that didn't ultimately reach the target dose of Saxenda. Now, this study did have a little caveat where they said, well, if a person can't tolerate the 2.4 milligrams once per week of Wagovi, you can keep them at the lower 1.7 milligrams once per week instead. And from what I can tell, there wasn't a similar caveat for the Saxenda group. Basically, everybody in the Saxenda group was told to push the dose as high as you can possibly go. And if you can't tolerate it, well, then you're just going to have to drop out. And I guess I shouldn't say pushed. I would say that people were maybe more assertively encouraged to stay on Saxenda despite the high dose and despite side effects compared to Wagovi, where they were given a little bit of breathing room, where it was kind of like, if you can't do 2.4, 1.7 is okay as well. And obviously, if you're not tolerating a medication, you're being told to continue pushing the dose up, you're probably at some point going to say GTFO, as the kids would say. So it's definitely possible that the individuals that were running this trial, and in the fact that Novo Nordisk was designing and had a lot of oversight in the trial, they kind of added this in there in order to reduce how many adverse events seem to occur in the Wagovi group to ultimately make Wagovi look a little bit better because this is certainly not a result that I have seen in clinical practice. Wagovi definitely causes more GI side effects in comparison to Saxenda. In fact, I will even start people on Saxenda first, get them titrated up, and then switch them over to Ozempic or Wagovi because the side effects are so much more milder and manageable. And hey, you're only injecting it once a day. So once you stop the injection, it clears a lot quicker. Whereas Wagovi, we're talking a once weekly injection here. And once that's in your system, you got to ride it out for that one week period. And again, Novo Nordisk is a private company, a private enterprise. And so they have a responsibility to their shareholders as much as they are producing drugs that are going to help and support individuals in managing their weight their responsibility is primarily to the shareholders. So yeah, they're going to tweak and modify things to make them look a little bit better if it means that they can potentially sell more drugs. Again, we can have the whole debate later about capitalism, blah, blah, blah. But this is currently where the situation of our world is at. And clearly, I must be in a petty ass mood today. Alas, Rubino did do a good trial here, other than kind of the small little things that might be, you know, nitpicking or what have you. Wagovi was certainly shown to be more effective than Saxenda, actually considerably so. This is something that I've also seen in clinical practice, not only from switching people from Saxenda to Wagovi, but also just in general, when I put individuals on these medications, when I put them on Wagovi Ozempic, they get a lot more effective results. And overall, they are, yeah, more potent and effective. But in clinical practice, the one difference being, while the side effects were similar between the two groups in this trial, Definitely Wagovi or Ozempic can certainly lead to more GI side effects in particular. And I would say a lot more people have had to discontinue that medication in my clinical experience compared to being on Saxenda. But does that mean you should avoid Wagovi altogether? No, not at all. It just might be that you might need a lower dose, might have to do a slower titration. Whatever the case might be, you might just have to build it in a little bit more slowly than what they did in the trial. That is a very rigorous process and they have certain milestones and things they need to hit in that 68 week period. But certainly there are finer tweaks and adjustments that you can make on your own individual basis because that is exactly what medicine should all be about is personalized to you as the individual and not a specific set of parameters. It is ultimately finding what works for you. And of course, to find out more information or to see if this medication would be a right fit for you, please speak with your doctor and the rest of your care team. So that is all for today, you beautiful people. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you enjoyed this and share this with your friends. Check out my website, healthcareevolve.ca to book a free consult with myself to see if you'd be a good fit for our program, as well to sign up for our mailing list. And check out my other social media channels at the official Dr. Dan. I'm on the tick, the talk, the gram, you name it. We are out there. So definitely come and check us out. Leave us a question down below. I do my best to answer all of the questions and comments, but I always sometimes do not get around to all of them. There's a lot of them. I really do try, everybody. 
But until next time, always remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks.